Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. Today we're going to talk about uh, one of my favorite uh, input devices in the digital age. Uh, years back we would use a rotary knob that would be connected uh, to a multi-selector or multi-position switch, or it would be um, connected to a potentiometer for an analog input. But in the digital age we've kind of moved on past all those type of switches and the rotary encoder uh, gives you a great tactile feedback. Uh, as you rotate them, they're, they've got detents in them, so you've got a positive position step by step as you rotate it. Uh, and then they provide what's called a quadrature signal back so that you can count whether you're going forward or reverse on the rotation. Now, many of the encoders, rotary encoder switches, also have a push button switch. So as you push the knob in, that would act as a switch. So you get a count going left or counterclockwise, a count going right, clockwise, and a push button. So you've got three inputs from the one device. Now, um, I'm going to bring this in. I don't know how, how well it's going to show here, but I thought I'd give it a try. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a very simple way, uh, one, to utilize it on a circuit board, very simply, and how to program it in Python on your Raspberry Pi. Uh, so first we'll take a look at the wiring diagram for this style rotary encoder, and we'll do that here on the computer. Okay, let's take a quick look at what we've got here. Uh, in this example, we've got uh, two rotary encoder switches with buttons, and uh, I'm using it on a Raspberry Pi 3. Um, wiring would be the same on most of the Raspberry Pis because as long as it's a GPI 040 pin connector, they're all the, wired the same way. Um, but what is a little bit different in how I've got it wired up here is I'm showing these 10K resistors, one for each input. And that would be the channel A, channel B, and push button of each of the two switches. And again, those are 10K ohm resistors and we're using them as pull-ups uh, as I'm pulling 3.3 volts off the Raspberry Pi through the circuit or through wires and then using that through each of these resistors to pull those signals high. Then as the button is pressed or as the rotary encoder goes through its phases, the switches will pull that signal low or direct it to ground and make them a zero volt signal. So this is our ground wire here. And then we've got the various um, inputs uh, from the switch into the Raspberry Pi uh, wired up. Uh, pretty much you can use any pins. Um, I haven't found any trouble yet with this particular library I'm going to show you. Uh, so it makes it quite simple to do. The biggest issue is uh, you want to make sure that you have pins available and that you can uh, wire them. Now, uh, the way I usually work with these rotary encoders, um, on the back side, uh, they've got these uh, legs. In this case, there will be five of them because it's got that extra button switch in it. Um, and these legs are rather flimsy or delicate. Uh, you can wire directly to these, but it makes it hard to deal with the uh, pull-up resistor. Uh, and with these legs being very delicate, it, they break easily. So I myself prefer to put them, uh, or put on the back of it, a perf uh, board. I make up a little circuit board so that uh, the pins are supported, the switch is properly supported, um, and then you can wire in your pull-up resistors and so forth. So as we got here in the drawing, you'll see that I've got perf board in the background, and that'll give you a rough idea how big it needs to be, one hundred thousandths of an inch spacing on the holes, and that'll give you a rough idea. You can cut that back if you're a little bit tighter with all your components and so forth. Now from here I'm going to take you over and I'm going to show you on the actual uh, breadboard uh, how I've got everything wired up, and then from there we'll go back into the uh, software so that you can see how I coded it and how you can incorporate it into your Python programs. Now here is a rotary encoder with a push button that I've mounted on a perf board. Now this isn't exactly like what I show in the fritzing diagram uh, because I need these uh, to be flexible in how I use them. I use these only in prototyping. 
and uh, that's why you'll see it here on the breadboard. And what I can do with these, plug them into the breadboard, like I've got this one, and then I can wire up on this side, uh, for example, my pull-up resistors here are connected to each of the inputs. I've got my grounds coming in, and I've got my 3.3 uh, volts for the pull-up resistors, and then here's my channel B, channel A, and my push-button switches, and those all come back to the GPIOs. In the example program, uh, we're going to be uh, configuring this as, say, dials on a radio. If you've got a, a car and a car stereo and it's got rotary dials on it, most probably these are the kind of switches that are in that car radio. So we'll use the left one as our volume control and the right one as our tuner control. So what we'll be doing, we'll be looking at these encoded signals uh, to determine which way the user turns it, clockwise or counterclockwise. That'll provide us with a count. And then we will also be looking for the push button action of these rotary encoders. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the software um, and how to work with these encoder switches. Uh, and as mentioned in this demonstration, we're going to set up the, the controls for a radio. So we'll have a volume and we'll have the tuner. Um, but before we can do any of that, um, we're going to need to load this encoder library. Here's the home page for it. And uh, I believe I've got that open here. Nope. Um, this is it. Uh, and this person's uh, ported this over from an Arduino library, but it works very, very well. Uh, he's showing that you just use pip install encoder. I believe I had to do pip3 for Python 3 install encoder. Um, so you may have to try that either way. And then here's the usage. It simply could not get any easier. So it's a wonderful program or a library to make this very, very simple to use. Uh, so if you have never done an, an install uh, using pip or pip3, you would go to your command prompt. I'll bring this over here. And uh, usually in my programs, what I'll do, I will do this. Copy. And paste. Hit enter and uh, it'll go through. Already says uh, the uh, library is installed. Obviously I'm using it so we know it's installed. Uh, yours might take a little bit longer to go through and, and do the installation. That's really it for installing the library. Uh, very, very simple. Um, then in our program we're going to import that library. We're going to import time and the function sleep specifically so that we, in our loop, can slow things down so we can see what's going on. And then we're going to import the uh, Raspberry Pi GPIO module uh, as GPIO. And then we're going to set it into BCM mode, which uh, sets it to the, uh, the pin numbers are related to BCM and not physical pin numbers. So you'll need your cheat sheet for that. Um, we're going to create the instances, one tuner, one volume. Very, very simple to do, encoder dot encoder, and you're going to give it uh, channel A and channel B. Uh, and those would be reference to the uh, uh, inputs or outputs from the switch as to which one's marked channel A and channel B. Um, in, and by chance, if in your testing you find out that instead of counting up, it's counting down, just reverse these two numbers and then you'll get your proper counting direction. So this establishes the tuner and the volume and gets it set up with the proper pin numbers. Uh, so before I go into these two functions, we'll just go ahead and run this and we'll rotate the dials and you'll see what's happening. The counts will show up here down below. So right now we've got nothing. I'll turn the encoder switch for the tuner clockwise and it's going negative and counterclockwise it's going positive. So that could be wrong for what I'm trying to do. I may need to reverse uh, the uh, pins 23 and 17 as shown when I instated 
the tuner function right here, or the tuner method. Now the one thing you'll notice, for each click, as I click through on this encoder, it counts by four. You can get it to count smaller, but you're going in between the detents, and that's really impossible to do uh, for a real functional uh, device in the field, because the switch is always going to want to click into that detent. But knowing that it counts by four, if you need it to count by one, simply divide the value by four, and then you'll get your count up or down by ones as opposed to by fours. Now over here is our, our volume control, and as you can see, counting up and counting down by fours. That is your encoder library, and that's how simple it is to uh, utilize these in your Python program. Okay, now let's take a look at these interrupt events uh, and how we can deal with that in Python. Very, very simple with the GPIO library that we imported here. Uh, the first thing you got to do is set up that pin uh, that this particular button, the, in this case we're talking about the push button here, uh, that pin has got to be connected to, in this case, BCM24. And we're going to establish that as an input, GPIO in. Uh, we'll skip over this function for a moment. And we'll come to this line, because this is the one that's doing all the work for you. Uh, GPIO dot add event detect. What that means is, anytime there's an event on a specified pin, it will detect it and then take action with that data or that input. Uh, so in this case, you'll see that we created the pin up here, or established it with number 24, um, or we set it up that way as an input, and here we're referencing that input, uh, and when that pin goes low, falling, going toward negative uh, voltage, uh, or zero volts, that is the event. Now rising would be the opposite of that, when it goes high. Um, I found that when using um, pull-down resistors or pull-up resistors, in this case pull-up, I like to detect falling. If I were using pull-down resistors, I would detect rising. Uh, just my way, that's worked out really well for me. Uh, so in this case, we're using pull-up resistors, and we're using the falling uh, signal. Now... Uh, the actual action that will be taken when this is detected is this callback function. And it says callback equals tuner push button. That is this function here. And here is the channel. That channel is this pin number. So if you needed to reference that in this function, uh, you would have that data available to you. But anytime this is pushed and that signal goes to falling, this function will run. And in here, you would have your code to perform whatever action you wanted to. Say it's an on-off button or a, a, a stop button or whatever the function is, you would have that logic in here. Here, we're just simply printing what's going on. And it works the same for the other one. Now, I'm going to try and get this to double-click for me. And I'm, well, that might have been a double-click there. Um, that is this bounce time. Uh, sometimes these switches aren't the best uh, switches around, and you'll get uh, uh, hysteresis, or you'll get uh, repeated inputs from a, a single push. And that is the bounce time. Increase the bounce time so that once it makes the first read, it will ignore everything for X number of milliseconds until it reads again. It's a very common uh, function that you'll see in many libraries dealing with inputs. Uh, it would be great if all switches were very clean. They would simply be on or off. But uh, if your uh, GPIO pin is being read very, very rapidly, odds are really good you'll get some double pushes or some double uh, false positives in that sequence. Uh, so this bounce time just puts in a delay there so you don't get those double readings. Uh, so that pretty much wraps it up uh, down here in uh, while loop. Um, all I'm doing is just printing out the, the tuner and the volume uh, encoder values, and that's it. And just sleep for a quarter of a second while it bounces back through.
Well, that pretty much wraps it up for how to use rotary encoders on the Raspberry Pi. As I mentioned, uh, the Pi 3 and 4 wiring would be all the same uh, as long as you're working on a GPIO 40 pin. Uh, you can use most any of the pins uh, with this library that I, I showed you. Um, all around, it just works really simple. Uh, it's a very effective tool. Uh, as far as uh, ergonomics and working with people, how this input device works, everybody knows what it is and how to use it. If you sat in a car and you turned on the radio or tuned to a channel, you were using these switches, and I don't think anybody told you how to do it. So that is the great benefit of using a rotary encoder switch. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this little uh, project. Hopefully you'll start incorporating them in your projects as you come up with those in the future. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't done so, and sure would appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up. Thanks again.